morning. It is yet another weekend, which means yet another day in the life of a researcher video. This is this is how it is. So it is quarter to twelve, did you say? Yeah. I am here with Jack, who has got a haircut. You will have seen him in my last day in the life of a researcher video. And I feel like this poor guy has a much longer day, and he's being generous and offering to let me take some blood from him for my experiments. So we're just going to get to the labs and I will take it from there. Hello, so we have just arrived at the labs um, and I've got all of the blood taking kit right there. And I'm gonna set this uh, the video up and film this segment, guys, but because I'm also using this clip in my phlebotomy video, um, you might see it twice if you watch both of those videos. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly show you the equipment we're using. Jack is there getting ready. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is take blood in these tubes. These have got EDTA in them, and that is just an anticoagulant to make sure that the blood doesn't clot. I'm going to be using a tourniquet, as you will see in a minute. Um, also, a plaster for the end. I have got a uh, 23G ga 23 gauge butterfly needle, and I'll show you that in a minute. And it's got the vacutainer attached to it. I've already washed my hands, and I'm also going to be wearing gloves. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Maybe I'll, in the actual phlebotomy video, I'll talk in more detail about everything. But Jack, are you ready? I'm ready to be bled. Do you give consent for your I blood to be give used consent to in my me. research? Yes. Fantastic. That's the most important thing. Um, oh, and by the way guys, if you do not like needles, then maybe fast forward this bit. But if you're interested, keep watching. <laughs> guys can see but this vein here is called the median cubital uh, and that is the vein that I'm going to be taking blood from. I think that's the uh, vein that's most commonly used um, but I guess it, it does depend on the person. With Jack is very clear. So firstly I'm just going to give it a quick rub with ethanol just clean the surrounding areas and then I can go on to put the tourniquet on. And what this does is just helps the veins pop out so that they make it becomes easier to see. It's a bit tight. Um, does that feel okay? Yeah. Perfect. Can I get you to make a fist? Okay. Yeah, so you can really see the vein. I'm, I, I don't think you guys can see it on camera very well. Um, not this one, but this one's protrude, protruding quite nicely. So I think I'm going to go with this vein, but it needs to be at an angle like this. Okay, so now um, you shouldn't leave the tourniquet on for too long. So you've got to be quite quick with this. So this, as I said, is a butterfly needle and it's already attached to the vacutainer here. And I hope this is in focus, guys. I hope you can see this. Um, I think it is in focus. Yeah, that's so, um, so yeah, this is the butterfly needle. And what you're going to see in a minute is when I insert this in, a little bit of blood should come in here and that's called the drawback. So I'll start that. You've got to position it at the right angle. Jack, are you, are you okay for me to? I'm ready. To? Great, okay. Sharp scratch. Okay, so I don't know if you guys see, can you see the drawback of blood going into here? I hope you can. Um, anyway, so when I can hold this in place like that, and with this hand, I can hold the vacutainer and put this in the tubes like this, and the blood should go through. Sorry, it's a bit difficult with left hand. There you go. And there, as you can see, oh, my glove is in the way. As you can see, getting blood going into the tubes. How are you feeling? Excellent. Excellent? Like I'm being bled. Good. Great. <laughs> First tube done, and once you've done it, immediately you want to invert it just so it's mixed in with the EDTA to prevent um, blood clotting. take the last tube, you take the tourniquet off um, for your final tube. So this is my final one, final and fourth one. Um, you just have to be careful as well, like I think a common mistake that is often made and it's very easy to make is to leave the tourniquet on especially when you take the needle out and when you do that because there's a high pressure blood can go everywhere and a colleague of ours did that. 
Me? Did I tell you? Um, I'm not going to say his name in the video because I know he watched it. <laughs> but he was taking blood from one of our professors. And uh, he took the needle out without turn taking the tourniquet off. And <laughs> the poor guy got covered in blood. Oh no. <laughs> Accidentally. That's also a safety hazard. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so the tourniquet's off. Now, do you mind turning your arm a little bit so they can see? So the needle is in like that. Um, I will get a fresh cotton bud, put that in there, and then just gently take the needle out like that. So now, to prevent any kind of bruising, what you need to do is apply pressure. And I could just get you to hold that like that. And I'm going to show you something really cool, guys. So because um, needle stick injuries are something that can occur and they're quite dangerous, I hope this can focus. There we go. So the way that these are designed is that you can pull this. Oh. There you go. And that just covers the needle and this won't come back down again. This means now the needle is safe to be discarded. So, they've all done, got the blood. Just going to get Jack to put pressure on that um, for, you know, one or two minutes, something like that, just to make sure um, he doesn't get any bruising later. Um, I have got four tubes of blood here and I'm going to show you how I extract white blood cells from them, as I said in my vlog. Um, and now the final part is, um, you just want to check to see how it's looking. So can I just have a quick look? Yeah, so if you can have a look here, the bleeding is stopped. There's like a little bit, but that's okay. Um, and now Jack, would you like me to put a plaster on? Yeah? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and just to finish the whole thing off, I'll put a little plaster on as well. There we go. Fantastic. All done. How was how was the experience? Oh wonderful. No, good. it was good. Very ten painless. Out ten. ten out of ten. Very painless. Very good. I'll try and catch up with him um later in a day or so and try and see how it looks. That's why I usually do just to make sure there isn't any bruising or anything like that. And there you have it. Okay guys, so this is the tissue culture hood um, that we use to do our primary uh, tissue work with because you know it needs to be sterile and we use it in a room that's different to the normal cell culture just because you don't want any contamination. Also here they wear blue lab coats instead of the white ones. Now I hope you guys could hear me because I know that's quite loud in the background but I'll try and show you as much as I can because I haven't got a tripod with me and just talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing with the pod. I hope you can kind of see what's going on. So the first thing I want to start doing is just putting, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay. So what I'm going to start off by doing is just putting all of the blood into one of these tubes which is called a falcon tube. that I have roughly about 30 mils of blood but because the blood is quite thick what I want to do is um, dilute it down a little bit with something called PBS which is basically like a saline solution and you guys might find this quite cool because I think it's quite cool this is something called a pipette gun and you use it to pick up specific volumes of liquid just put some FICOL, which is a solution, into four different falcon tubes. And what I'm going to do now is get the blood and layer it on top of FICOL. And because of the, di the different densities between uh, the, the two solutions, the blood will sit right on top of FICOL and the red blood cells will start migrating to the bottom. And in a minute, what I'm going to do is layer the blood and then spin it at a high speed. And what will happen then is all of the red blood cells, which are heavy, will go to the bottom. All of the blood plasma will stay at the top and the monocytes or the, um, the rest of the white blood cells will form a little layer through the middle, which then I will extract. So I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. You're going to be in this vlog, by the way. No, I'm not. That's <laughs> guys, that's Matt. He's hiding. Anyway, um, so as I said, 
you can see that as I laid the blood on top of the phycol, you can see it already separating with the red blood cells going to the bottom. And what I'm going to do now is just spin it in a centrifuge and then after 20 minutes I will show you how the plasma is completely separated. Hey guys, so it's a few hours later now and I did something very silly. So after I put the tubes in the centrifuge and what was supposed to happen is to spin them for 20 minutes at a certain setting and then you would be able to see the uh, white blood cells in the middle as I was explaining while I was extracting. But what I didn't realise is that the centrifuge wasn't on the correct setting and um, instead of spinning and speeding up very gently and slowly, which is what it's supposed to happen, the setting was on um, one in which it speeds up really, really, really quickly and I did not realise that once you start this process you can't stop it. And because this happened, all of my cells lies and unfortunately I couldn't use that blood for the rest of my experiments. It's really, really silly but as I was about to put it in the centrifuge, uh, I, like I showed you, Matt came in and we started having a chat and I was a bit distracted and it was a really silly thing to do. So unfortunately I've had to scrap those experiments for the day, which I'm very annoyed about but, you know, things like this happen. Um, so in this time I kind of just had a bit of a kicking myself moment, so I, you know, went and got some lunch and some food with Matt chilled out a little bit. Matt was really kind and he said that he would um, donate some blood for my research on Monday. So I think I'll repeat the experiment on Monday. And I guess in the meanwhile what I'm going to do is just clear all my stuff away and uh, do part of my other experiment. And I guess I'll show you a little bit of that as well. Um, but I think I will just have to come in tomorrow and set up a whole new set of experiments. And I will leave the blood experiments to do on Monday, but obviously because it's a weekday, I won't be able to vlog it. Which is a shame. I was excited to show you guys, but never mind. I guess the silver lining of all of that is that, um, you know, I got to hang out with Matt, which is great because we don't get to hang out that often. Anyway, I will stop rambling. I'm still really in the mood, but never mind. I will see you in the next one. Do you want to say hi, Matt? It's a video. No, I don't. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to say hi? Hello. <laughs> hey. Hello. So I have no idea what time it is. Uh, it'll be on the screen somewhere when I edit this. Um, but I have spent the last couple of hours just catching up with Matt since I explained to you. I stupidly messed up my experiments. Um, but it was really nice catching up with Matt and he was helping me write a job application, which is great. And now I am back in Newhan's house with this guy because he has a lot of work to do today and I am here for moral support. And uh, can I actually do anything to help you or are you just doing clever things that I don't understand? You can understand? do a little dance that will entertain me. Will that make? Is you messed up my blood. I bled for you. I don't know what that's like. I, I was literally getting like so upset earlier and Matt was like, oh well you can take blood from me and just pretend it's Jack's blood and do the experiments. But it's okay. I couldn't do that. I've got plenty more where that came from. He's too kind. Anyway, uh, we're just gonna hang out here for a little bit and if Jack has a free spare couple of minutes later, I might get him to talk a little bit about what he's doing. So I will see you there. Do you want to explain this exciting thing? Okay, I'm all prepared for camera, but I got very excited over this. Long story short, this is a lot of different proteins. I don't know if you can see them. It's like a lot of different, like, limey, limey bits. Oh, They're yeah. all different kinds of proteins. Mm -hmm. And I'm basically trying to stick protein to a certain kind of resin. And I had to overexpress it so that my bacteria was making the protein I needed. And then I mm -hmm. had to, like, whittle it down. <laughs> and now you can see there are some very big bands. These are three different proteins. Oh, I see. And it's being made. Oh my god, so this is the thing that you've been working on for a while, right? I don't want to know how long I've been trying to make this protein. <laughs> how long? Come on, entertain us. A month and a half. Oh my god. Science! <laughs> this is what science is. Stupid mistakes that I make, and a month and a half of... Of mistakes. Of mistakes too. <sighs> Okay, so this is slightly different, but as you saw earlier, you saw my proteins on a gel. Before we get to that stage, 
we need to separate all the proteins out. So I have a sample here which contains hopefully my one little protein, but it's going to have all sorts of different kinds of protein in it. Um, so I'm going to run it on a gel and it's going to separate them out to make all those bands. Mm -hmm. I'm going to load it into this. And it requires lots of concentration, so it's going really to be... fiddly. Okay, lots of... Uh, so I'm going to shut up and I'm just going to watch him do it. Does it smell really bad? You tell me. Um. It's dead. Oh my god! <laughs> it smells like strong chemicals. Oh. It smells like rotten eggs. It does smell like rotten eggs, but like chemically rotten eggs. Ew. You can see bubbles, and I think maybe you can see bubbles, which means that there's a current running through it. And what it's going to do is, so these bits here are going to run down the gel, and this one here is a marker, so it will have lots of different lines of different molecular weights. So Jack's just gone downstairs to meet his friend, so I'm going to put my camera away because I'm sure his friend's going to think I'm a massive weirdo, but Look at these adorable plants. Are they not like the cutest little fluffy cactuses that you have ever seen or what? Anyway, like I said, let's put this camera away. I will see you when I next see you. Oh, I wish I got that on camera. Thank God you didn't. That's so good. <laughs> okay, uh, so do you want to tell them what, the, what you're doing okay, now? Okay, so those gels that we, we loaded earlier, uh, I've just finished running. They've separated out, like I said they would. Mm -hmm. And that BSA gradient I was telling you about that nobody understood, Yes. Well, you would expect to see more protein get bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can see here, we're staining it now, mm -hmm. that these bands are getting bigger as, it, as the concentration of protein gets more and more and more. And then over here is my actual protein, and I'm going to correlate the colour, or the intensity of this, yes. with that. And what's like that. that going to show you? How concentrated my protein is. <laughs> Everyone. So it's Sunday today and I'm heading into the labs now. It's around 20 to 4. I forgot to film a finishing segment for the video yesterday, so I thought I might as well end it today. I'm not going to be in the labs for too long. I think just maybe an hour or so because I need to just run something through the fax machine. But I thought, you know, since you guys didn't get any goodbye segment yesterday, you get a little chunk of a, I guess, hello segment today. And oh, it is an absolutely beautiful day. Hello lovelies, so it's 20 past five and I think I'm going to end up staying a little longer than I thought just because I realised that I have to split all of my cells and that's going to take a little while. On a plus side, the experiments that I actually came here to do came out quite alright. So I guess I will just split all of these babies and then I'm ready to go home and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. So, cell culture is all done and I think I'm ready to head off home. Oh, and I actually forgot to say that a few of you commented and said that um, you want to hear more about my actual research instead of just watching like daily vlogs. And I thought you guys would find it kind of boring, but since you guys requested it, I guess that's something that's going to be coming up soon. Overall though guys, I hope you enjoyed yesterday's and part of today's vlog. As always, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it would help me out a lot. And until next time, take care and I'll see you later.